Ha! What's up, folks? Even though technically, like, there's, like, zero viewers and whatnot, but, I mean, why not? I'm also just, like, recording for the sake of recording here until someone shows up. Because why not? Why not go for a, um, you know, like, let's just have a stream where I look at all the interesting YouTube comments and it's like, oh, hey, YouTube comments, uh, are you cool? Are you not cool? Who's going to get a shout out? Who's not? Because, like, why not, right? So, anyway, but for those of you who are just joining me, uh, Please be like, hey, I can hear you because I'm still testing out the sounds and I want to make sure that you guys can actually hear me. So, so, and, uh, hello. Yo, it's late, but you're here. Yeah, of course it's late. It's like, hey, how do you say that? Is that Pariah Sabet? 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 I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Like, I'm failing at that. So, and uh, it's extremely, like, bright in here. Hey, there's Booga. <laughs> wow, that's kind of, like, really late. I mean, it is only 10.45 p.m. Uh, where I'm at. So, yeah, I am sleepy, but that's what I do when I do the uh, Who Triggered CSJ episodes. I always do them really late and kind of randomly on a whim, so... But yeah, let's actually uh, dive into the show. I'm also gonna be interacting with the audience, so I'm gonna be reading what you guys say at the same time. We'll just we're gonna hang out while I go through my interesting uh, YouTube comments here. So let's uh, let's uh, get down here. So interestingly enough, uh, we got uh, Nathan Higgins who posted a month ago. I kept falling asleep a few times in the video. Thanks for reminding me to wake up. He was responding to uh, Season 10, Episode 8, how do uh, INTPs compare to INFPs, and yeah, I was telling him to wake up, so yes, hello fellow Night Owls, with my uh, 18 people here on this stream. Oh, 19, that's awesome. So, maybe we'll get some more, who knows, um, but I mean, why not do late nights, you know what I'm saying? You can call me Par, okay. So are we like, Par from like par four on a golf course right or maybe it's par lumber like the lumber yard up in oregon maybe par lumber except i think that's p-a-r-r -R, par lumber uh friend of the family actually works for par lumber although he told me recently he was going to be moving uh to like the oregon coast so who knows so let's get down to it all right so countess one so I, I was reading some comments on YouTube and it's like, okay, count this one. This person's like posting a lot. And one time they're like slapping me in the face. And then like another time they're like, oh, you know, CS Joseph, this is like so awesome. But then on the next comment, it's like, oh, I'm going to slap you in the face or whatever. And it's just kind of like, hmm, what's going on there? Oh, what's up, Helen? Uh, so um, how to develop any nemesis? I'm an INFJ. Uh stop worrying about other people betraying you that's a good uh start to uh, developing any nemesis uh because it's like oh, i'm worried that these people won't want me anymore and because like i'm worried that they don't want me anymore i had this fear of abandonment on top of my like performance anxiety so yeah like don't worry or stop assuming that people are going to betray you because uh, you have to understand that as an INFJ, you're actually causing that to happen because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, just saying. So, like, watch out. Um, always ask, what is it that I'm not seeing? Uh, yeah, well, also, Sher, uh, Sher Shaul Shul. I'm sorry if I'm... Well, I mean, I'm, I am butchering your name. Uh, just, like ask other people you know uh hi i'm new to this channel can you give me a crash course about what it's all about it's about psychology this channel is about psychology really and how to read people how to manipulate them uh how to have better relationships with them um even uh better relationships with your parents better sex even uh we cover every aspect of human interaction from a psychological standpoint and yes, it's about uh, life. 
any nemesis is not necessarily about bad omens it really is not um i mean even extroverted sensing can sense bad omens when you're like looking at uh because extroverted sensing has psychometry and psychometry is aware of uh memories um uh, attached to like physical locations and that can contain bad omens too right uh so that's uh expert sensors you know like when you see like those voodoo dolls that are posted or scarecrows and whatnot that's psychometry and that scares away extroverted sensors but doesn't really scare away introverted sensors because expert intuition is like meth that's just bullshit you know so it's kind of how it goes um uh so Cor Corleen Spider, my other account cat chat anymore. I don't know if I said something bad, but I promise I will stop. So please don't meet me again. Okay, sure, fair enough. What type is Frederick Nietzsche? I think Nietzsche might be an INTJ. Uh, the reason why is because Lou Andreas Salome, who was like totally banging him, uh, or he was banging her, I guess. Uh, she's an ENTP, so I think he's an INTJ. I'm not really sure about that, but I really think Frederick Nietzsche might actually be an INTJ. Um, Finally caught you live. Been watching you for over a year. Never caught you live. Really? You've actually been watching me for a year? How come I've never re read any of your comments, ETHT? Like, do you not comment? Like, because like, I, I get that this episode is like who triggered CSJ, but you guys, do you guys do understand that I actually read every comment? Now, I will admit I don't always read every reply. And like some comment threads that I really care about, I'll read the replies and I'll actually talk about that in this episode. But uh, all, honestly, I just, I read every comment, but the replies, it's really hard within the interface of how YouTube has it set up. It's hard for me to keep track of all the replies. Uh, so I don't always do replies, but uh, if you're concerned about me not replying, just make a fresh new comment somewhere and then I'll definitely read that. It may take me some time though. So just like be aware of that. Um, any advice for procrastination? Uh, yeah, get off your lazy ass and put yourself outside of your comfort zone. Uh, I think that would probably be the best advice I could give for someone uh, who's procrastinating. Um, and if you're an INTP, maybe you should like go out of your way to help people. Um, because if you're helping people, it'll make you more intelligent, make you smarter. Uh, what type was Adolf Hitler? I am not going to comment on that whatsoever. Um, what are your thoughts on people saying your teachings are inaccurate in relation to, to socionics? I could care less about what our people are saying. Uh, I, I don't care. Um, so... Uh, and uh, hi, Chase. How does reading a book influence a person like the game? Well, the game is written by an ENTP, and it's a social engineering book about how to convince women to sleep with you consistently. So it's not exactly like, I mean, the greatest material, you know. So I actually recommend women read that book just so they can see how easily they can be manipulated in certain areas. I watch your videos from the very beginning and rarely comment because you know I'm the background type. Fair enough. Uh, what type is Fluffy the Comedian? I don't know. <laughs> I really have no idea. So let's get down uh, on how to develop T.O. Child. I don't know how to develop T.O. Yeah. Child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Railgun's joining us tonight in the studio, uh, and uh, she does not know what T.O. Child is either. Nope. So no, uh, do you know any books written by INTJs? Uh, anything Frank Abagnale wrote? Um, you can read. Um... No, this is not a Q and A. I'm just hanging out with you guys. Like hey. seriously, um, just started reading it. Are feminine and masculine preferences related to type and how strictly? Yes, they are. You need to watch season seventeen, episode three or four for the answer to that question. Um, uh, do you think some of the older lectures need to be updated? Yes, I do. Actually, that's a really good question, and I'll answer that. So, uh, Cor Corellian or Corlene Spider, um, um, basically, uh, I don't know if I did Patrick or Patrice O'Neill. I don't know if I did, but uh, older lectures, we're actually going to be redoing all of Season 3 very soon. It's going to be an update to all of Season 3, and it's going to be broken up into pieces per type. Uh, just to kind of make it more easier to digest, uh, kind of, uh, but have all the details per type as well. It's probably going to be a 32-episode season, but the episodes can be a lot shorter, probably about 15 to 20 minutes a piece. So just making you guys aware that season three is actually going to be completely redone. Um, but uh, And also with all of our new updated lingo and definitions and a lot of the information there, and we're also about to release a book too um, that should have like most of all of our information in textbook format for you guys. So it's, it's gonna be fun uh, when that comes out. I actually had a meeting um, 
about it. Yes, there is controversy surrounding Hitler's type. He's just not a uh, an INFJ. A lot of people say INFJ, but they're all wrong. So don't pay any attention to that. Um, like uh, Coreal Corealian, Corealian. Okay. I um, have I done social engineering INFP? No, I have not. I have not done social engineering INFP. I still have to do social engineering INTP. It's coming. It's funny because that particular lecture season has like taken nine months for me to get out. But like that's what happens when you have a day job, right? So, oh, and this is not like this company is not making enough money for me to like retire from my job yet. Mm -hmm. So until that happens, like I'm not really doing that, you know. So. Marianne from my work. Oh, is that Marianne? Yeah, Marianne? look, she said INFP. She said we put out a social engineering INFP. That was Marianne. Yeah, no, not yet. Not yet. Um, Tell her I said hi. So, <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. Uh, I'm an INT, I'm an ENTP and I have too many thoughts on what I want romantically. Any advice? Uh, maybe you should people. just like read books and get educated. Maybe. Uh, and don't be loyal to the wrong people. <laughs> So, is Nietzsche an INFJ? No, he's not. Um, is it important to have a romantic relationship to grow yourself? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Uh, romantic relationships definitely grow people for better or worse. Uh, it's definitely useful. Anyway, we're going to get away a little bit from this Q&A related content right now. Uh, so, so, I know you guys like, this is not a Q&A stream. I might answer questions, but like just hanging out and whatnot. So, uh, uh, no social engineering of the INTPs, please. T, uh, thank you very much. Can't hear Railgun. That's okay because um, I'm not entirely. Sh she doesn't have a microphone attached to her, so that's why you can't can't hear her. So it's not an issue. Um, if you're not sure if you're FIT or hero, like literally, literally learn the the type grid. So like honestly. <laughs> It's like a very different. It's like a what? FITI heroes are very different things. Yeah, FITI yeah. heroes. It's like, hmm. It's like, are you smart or are you dumb? No, I'm just joking. No, no, I'm just, no I'm just joking. Don't say that. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, okay, so uh, really, he's the only YouTuber whose almost one hour video I have watched attentively. Vids from other YouTubers, max 20 minutes. It's like he's a cousin who grew up with me and is now lecturing because I behaved like an idiot. It's like he understands me or my type. Okay, why did I highlight this comment? Because this is like a highlighted comments episode. The reason why, um, the reason why is because, uh, the reason why is because, uh, like, a lot of people give me crap about having, like, way too long lectures. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, like, it's not, uh, it's not appropriate. Um, um, I make fun of religion in front of my religion teacher, but I'm saying unconscious INF Jesus, and she has no idea what I talk about XD ENFP, by the way. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, but, uh, uh, um, so yeah, like, I'm highlighting that because it's like, okay, guys, you know, I spent a lot of effort making the really long lectures. I get that the, you know, most people's attention span is like, I mean, statistically for a while it was like 11 minutes, but a lot of people are kind of going more towards the YouTube model and being okay with the longer episodes. And they're spending more time actually watching the content. And I get a lot of pressure from people like, oh, you need to have shorter lectures, etc. But honestly, guys, like I'm trying to like deliver lectures here with like a whole bunch of stuff all in one place. If you can't be patient, with like these lectures, do you want like the quality of what I'm saying to go down? You see what I'm saying, right? Like I could probably cut up into small pieces and we could do that. But at the same time, like I want the entire message to get to you, you know, per person, per type or whatever subject matter we're talking about. We're shooting for quality here, you know, and a lot of people don't really like get that. And it just like, seriously, it bothers me. Like, so do I, do you really want me to like do shorter videos and whatnot? Is that like actually something, um, is that like actually something you guys want? Uh, because in my opinion, if I were to do that, then it'd be less concise because 
like I'm trying to give you like this encyclopedia to psychology, right? But there's just so much content to cover, you know, that's why there's a lot of details. Now, granted, I'll admit, okay, sometimes my intros can be up to 15 minutes long, but still we have so many new people coming to this community and coming to this channel that they kind of need to be able to get that information right up off the bat, you know? So, uh, you know, thank you, uh, Batul uh, Garibe. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> make them longer. Um, no, don't make short videos. Continue to beat dead horses. Most of us need it. Make them longer. Okay, you like the long lectures. I, I appreciate that because honestly, like, uh, people within the community need to see that. And I'm under a lot of pressure to... Um, to make the videos shorter. And I've always been against that. And here's another thing too, like I get that I'm like outlining some of my lectures now and I have seen the quality increase just a little bit from outlining, but I do my best work when I freestyle. But again, I'm an ENTP, freestyle ENTP is just kind of how you go. You know what I'm saying? This is how I, that's how I roll, you know? So, so like what's the, uh, Zara K, I concur. It's called a damn lecture for a reason. It's not a viral, thirsty YouTube vid. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, I, I, am I wrong in feeling like these, this content should not be like clickbaity? I mean, no offense to like some of the other MBTI YouTubers, although I don't consider myself an MBTI YouTuber because I actually hate the MBTI and I have nothing to do with the MBTI. But when you're looking at other YouTubers, like, um, you know, some of the other ones, um, they have a lot of really clickbaity titles, like top 10 reasons you're an INFJ or whatever, which I had some, I had an ENFP member of my audience link that to me, like, oh, it's got 2.5 million views. I'm like, oh, it's been out for years. You see what I'm saying? But apparently they're comparing me to that. And it's like, okay, I mean, sure, if a video is out for a long time, of course it's gonna have 2.5 million views. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but anyway, like I'm freestyling it and uh, people just get all like triggered about me like doing that. And, and I just don't, I just don't want to do that. Uh, and, um, and uh, you wouldn't mind if you may try to make more clickbaity. Well, I don't know. Depth, depth is, depth is important. Now, what we may do and what we may do, we may actually like, I might film a long lecture but within my outline, I may put little points where it's like, okay, this is part one, and then this is part two, and then maybe break them up in shorter. But I don't know how that's going to impact the release schedule. So, and I kind of don't want to do that for the patrons because with the patrons, I just want to keep the long thing because I kind of treat the patron gold tier like this HBO kind of thing, right? You, because you know, Game of Thrones, right? You just, you subscribe for one month, you binge watch all the Game of Thrones, you're good to go, right? You know what I'm saying? Although I appreciate those of you who still remain anyway for the new episodes. I, I really appreciate the support that you give the community from patrons and that's awesome and, and thank you for that. But at the same time, like some people can't afford that and I get that. So like, if there's like a season that they know that it's done, that it's there, they just put in like the, the 25 bucks a month, they can binge watch the whole thing, they're good to go. And it's a nice little episodic format where they get all the information at once. So. I'm just not really sure, and this is why I'm bringing this up because this comment here, you know, you know, I take criticism too, right? You know, I don't grow, I don't become a better content creator or a better lecturer or a better teacher without having criticism and feedback, right? So that's why I'm just having this discussion with you guys, just to kind of get your th thoughts on this. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel it's still a bit crammed. There is too much to learn. I like how you flow and expand the concepts. Okay, fair enough. You're right. It is really crammed. Um, Current format weeds the people out who don't want to listen. Thank you for saying that. It is written, biblically speaking, uh, he who has an ear, let him hear. Uh, Jesus said that uh, I would rather have people who actually desire to listen and learn this material and then share this material as a result instead of like those shallow people that just show up, get their little fix on like, ow, who are the INFJs? And they get triggered by it because they're an INFP and then leave. And then they come back six months later realizing I was correct. And then all of a sudden they're a member of the community, which happens all the time. And it's funny, I get criticized often by people like, oh, you're too harsh on, on people. And it's like, yeah, I'm really harsh on them. And then they come back a half a year later and realize I was correct to begin with, which is hilarious to me, but also necessary for the personal growth. Because sometimes you just have to be willing to get to that point where you're like willing to admit you're wrong. Let's be honest. Um, uh, is it possible that it could be an ISFP and my INTP because I follow my beliefs, but also can be very logical. It depends if you're like a man of faith, Eric Alvarez. I don't know if you have church background in your nurture. So 
we'll see what that all right so we have christina bowman with her uh um so i'm gonna i'm actually gonna delete these um as i as i go here just so i don't redo them so christina bowman from a month ago ew what is wrong with you sounds like an intjf or more than one of, from what you mentioned, saw through your BS, got paranoid about you manipulating her because you were, and you got butt hurt. Now you've got it out for INTJs because you're bitter. My experience as an INTJ, I love how people always comment, like, as an INTJ, you know, is that every time I've been paranoid about something, I've ultimately been proven right. When I feel paranoid, oh wait, is that an INTJ, like, admitting? Christina Bowman, are you admitting to confirmation bias? <gasps> Wait a minute. A TE user being biased? No. Wait a minute. Oh, all the TE users are like, oh, Mr. C.S. Joseph, you're so biased all the time. And I'm like, okay, you do realize that when you're accusing me of bias, you're actually way more biased than I am. And like, because you're actually partial because FIT users are kind of unaware of the fact that they get pretty partial with their beliefs. And then it's like, hmm, okay, I'm biased. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Fair enough. But like, come on. So call me paranoid when we recognize they're being manipulative AF. When I was younger, I would listen to these manipulators and think that I'm paranoid. Not anymore. Especially that I know this narcissist, she's talking about me, uh, and people like him talking about me exist. You can lie to yourself all you want, narcissist. What are you doing? It's disgusting and harmful. Okay. So Christina Bowman just admitted publicly that she has confirmation bias and she's calling me a narcissist when, okay, why is C.S. Joseph not a narcissist? Let's actually explore that. I'm not a narcissist because of I'm doing this and it's literally volunteer work. I don't get paid to do this for one. Uh, two, I am revealing how people are social engineered and manipulated so that people can defend against being manipulated and social engineered. Maybe that would like, you know, actually be useful to people. Uh, I give away free coaching sessions all the time. I do a whole bunch of pro bono work all the time. Like, really? But I'm a narcissist, you know, someone who's so self-absorbed, right? And it's like, and then this INTJ is like completely like triggered over that. And it's like, yeah, and, and KR, good point. People often accuse people of things that they are guilty of. Exactly. And that's exactly what I think is happening here with Christina Bowman. So Christina Bowman, thank you for your amazing comment. And thank you for sharing with the audience how you have confirmation bias. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll take my douchebaggery over to the next person. Thank you. So TBH. Um, all right, Theo Degrassi. Why do you keep jumping around? You're not a child. Well, get some structure in your videos. Okay, so... This is probably like some ISTP, ESTJ person who's like making this comment. And Theo Degrassi, like, I get it. It's really annoying that I jump around and I'm very tangential, but like, I'm a freaking ENTP. How about you go out of your way to like judge people by their own standard instead of judging people by your own standard? Because that's like literally proof that you're ignorant, okay? Like, seriously, have you ever heard of the golden rule? Treat others the way you want to be treated? Like, seriously, have you ever heard of that? Because here's the thing. I'm an ENTP and I'm an ENTP male because ENTPs are like feminine because like we have multiple feminine types in our heads. Like I have a feminine ENTP ego. I have a feminine ISFJ uh, subconscious and I have a, and I have a feminine uh, ESFP uh, super ego. So I'm like triple feminine. So I'm kind of like a feminine by default because I'm an ENTP. You know what I'm saying? And like, uh, and what that means is, is that there's less ENTP males out there than there are ENTP women. While ENTPs make up 3% of the population, if you're to break it down between male and female, ENTP males are actually about 1% of the population or 1.5% of the population. It's actually a lot less. There's a lot more ENTP females out there, which means society by default, especially this SJ society, are triggered by people like me existing. You see what I'm saying? So like, uh, yes, Tasty Flav, I am literally triggered right now. And yes, this is what you came for. Uh, the point is though, like, come on, Mr. Theo Degrassi, like seriously, are you literally saying right now that I'm this person who has to adhere to your standard because you, if you were a YouTuber, you'd be applying some structure? Why aren't you YouTubing right now? Where's your videos? Where's your content? 
I'm sure you're really successful with your structure. Stop judging me based on your standard and how you would do things. How about you just let me be who I am? Because it would be nice if people would appreciate ENTPs, you know, especially ENTP males. You know what I do? I actually go out of my way to judge you by your standard. If you're an ISTP or an ESTJ, I'm gonna let you be an ISTJ or, a, or an ESTJ or an ISTP. And like, I'm gonna hold you to a better version of you and do that out of respect for you. How about you like do that for me? You know what I'm saying? Like that would make sense because that's the whole point of the science folks so that we can understand each other. But no, 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 no. We have to be ignorant and then judge people according to our own standard. Yeah, way to love your neighbor as yourself, bro. Way to treat others the way you want to be treated. If I want to be treated how, you know, if I want to be treated the way, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm going to be treated well, if I want to be treated well with others, I better make sure I'm treating other people well. So how about Mr. Degrassi, you treat me well. That would be nice. Like, that would be really nice. Like, seriously, come on. Um, you just mock and character attack people. Uh, okay, actually, it's called accountability, bro. Like, yeah, like, seriously, like, what the hell? Like, can we can we not have, like, accountability? That would be nice, you know? Like, why can't we have accountability? Like, like seriously, why not? But, well, apparently we can't. We can't, we can't do accountability here because, like, if we did accountability, that would mean we'd have to take responsibility for our actions. Oh, man. Like that would, that would suck. You just character attack people, you know, actually, no, I'm calling a horse a horse, you know? So like, come on. <laughs> yeah, like, like, no. <laughs> and no, I can't make everyone, everyone, get out of your feels and man up. Okay, yeah, my feels, okay, thank you. Um, you're holding me accountable for being childish. Okay, break it down, right, you know? <laughs> All right, so uh, so thank you, Mr. Degrassi, for your amazing content. Coconut Milch. Why am I loving this video is geared towards men? LOL. I got a minimum wage job when I was in high school, and it gave me such confidence to have paychecks for my work. And then I went to university, got an expensive bachelor's degree, and when I graduated, sure enough, back to making minimum wage. It's like my degree didn't help me at all. It was shitty times. I felt like the whole education system had lied to me about the importance of education, but now I have a better paying job. I had a similar experience. Um, I could be in the same position though, without a degree, had I some experience in a relevant field, you can literally get the same jobs as college graduates without a degree if you're willing to work for a year or two in a similar position for less pay. Less pay is still more income than college tuition though. And now that I'm finally financially independent, I have the kind of confidence against I did when I was in high school working my first paying job. And this job is teaching me a lot about myself and what I want as well. Getting on field experience is crucial because now if I want to go back to school and get a master's degree, I'll at least be a little bit informed of my decision. I feel like we think through our minute uh, financial decisions actually more and more than about education. Education is expensive and we act like it's always right, aka affiliative, uh, to pursue an education when really it's not true at all. I'm rambling, but basically if and when I have kids, I like them to know that college isn't all that. Good point. Um, they should learn to read, research, try and think things for themselves. Yeah, like get an account at cbtnuggets.com or Skillshare and learn skills because skills are more valuable. And let's be honest, folks, blue collar jobs are gonna be like super important to white collar jobs. White collar jobs are on the decline. Blue collar jobs, I just found out that truckers who work for Walmart are getting paid over $170,000 a year just because they went through training to get a CDL license because there's just not enough truckers out there. Like bros, if you want to get a job out there, go get become a trucker for Walmart. It's eight and a half hour. It's eight and a half eight, eight and a half hours a day. It's like really great work. Like seriously, check that out. And to stay healthy, do calisthenics while you're on the road. Kinobody.com, uh, Greg O'Gallagher's calisthenics system, or uh, Frank Madrano as well for calisthenics, even though he's a vegan. Definitely check those guys out because you can actually stay fit while you're working. And if you need internet, get yourself a Verizon Unlimited account and you can tether your phone while you're on the road. And then you have like an RV battery with you that you can charge up when you stay at truck stops and whatnot. That gives you like two days worth of battery power. You can run your laptop, your internet, everything while you're on the road. That way you can still like even play video games online if you wanted to just basically fine. Even when you're like traveling around in your, in your truck working for Walmart, etc. So check that out guys. It's like a, a pretty good place to go. So, anyway, uh, 
let's go there. Um, so yeah, they're basically uh, rambling, but their point is financial self-sufficiency is really important. So thank you for your comment. I wanted to highlight that out for the audience because it's like, hey, you know, uh, it's super important. And then, uh, what is mature masculine uh, king archetype? Um, I don't even remember who said that, sorry. And then um, I was calling out verse 114 in the Gospel of Thomas. Simon and Peter said to them, make Mary leave us for females don't deserve life. And then Jesus is like, hold on, bro. Like, stop talking smack about women like that. And he's like, look, I will guide her to make her male so that she too may become a living spirit or resembling you males. For every female who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? Basically, it's Jesus literally talking about women's rights. So like even Jesus was pro women's rights all the way back then. That's pretty dope. And uh, this person was like calling out, you know, how like I'm a misogynistic pig when the reality situation is like, that's not true. Um, so, uh, Ah, all right, so Olivia Ray, every video you have make me laughing. You're so harsh, it's great. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the uh, praise there on uh, me being harsh. Um, and she said that on the how do INFJs compare to INFPs. INFJ so Cali girl said same for me. I really enjoy the way he presents information. Much appreciated there. Uh, a lot of people give me a lot of crap about being harsh, especially when you have people like host Derek. I'm talking with famous people joining us this evening telling me, or it could potentially be his wife, I'm not sure, uh, telling me that I'm just character attacking people and being a total douchebag, but I mean, okay, fair enough. Um, so anyway, uh, Mamu says, I've watched 30 of your videos so far and found your analysis to be brilliant. I've recently found that, that I have INTJ personality. Unfortunately, I find that you make a, you made a generalization in this video. Uh, at 907, that might not be true. You state that TE results in group think. So this person is calling me out for saying that TE results in group think. It's because TE is based on beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from personal experience, I seek the truth. Okay. You may seek the truth, but whether or not you actually behave truthfully as a TE user is questionable. Um, in, a, in a meeting with nine others, I suggested option A, whilst the other nine suggested option B. Okay. I certainly did not agree with the group, group think, and I said that I would not accept option B. I was prepared to escalate to middle management. Well, what if that group who suggested option B, uh, when you suggest option A, what if option A was actually part of the greater uh, group think outside of that little microcosm group? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, like, like seriously. I was prepared to escalate to middle management. Great, how affiliative of you, following the process. So you're following the bouncing ball. You know, that's, 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 really, that's really courageous. Uh, if option A was not agreed to, I would escalate to upper management. You just repeated yourself. If upper management did not agree with option A, I'd be prepared to select a nuclear option and go public. Are you like client trying to claim right now that uh, Mr. Mamu, that you are like some kind of, uh, like do, do you really thrive in public opinion? Do you really value public opinion that much? I mean, do you really think the public's actually gonna care enough to support you as a result of that? Is that really a wise decision? Wouldn't you end up destroying your own reputation in the process? Like, that's kind of like almost on the edge of FI pride. Like, be careful. Like, I don't recommend that. In the end, upper management agreed with me and the other nine group members made a U-turn. Subsequently, I was found to be 100% uh, correct. But this decision was so stressful. I don't know if NI or, or lack of social skills contributed to my decision making. I don't care for group think if it is a bad decision. Well, if you have TE parent, that means it's very pessimistic, which means while TE parent can be uh, succumb to group think, it's very pessimistic about it. So it's actually gonna have the most accurate result as far as group think goes. Sometimes group think can be a good thing because sometimes public opinion or belief systems can actually be very useful. Uh, but for the most part, you just really, you know, don't uh, don't even know. And don't say thank you for your comment. Extroverted and group. How far are these terms, you know, like uh, suggested? I, I appreciate that uh, very much, good sir. And uh, that was in response to what is extroverted thinking. And then I responded with seeking truth doesn't mean you won't default to collective thinking until proven long later. That is what groupthink is. So. Um, Coconut Milch again saying your lectures are not too long. Thank you for that. And uh, she lists a reason here. I'm also part of the generations of fatherless children as well. And I think your desire to help endless fatherlessness is noble. Thank you, Coconut Milch, for that statement. That is what we're trying to accomplish here with this community. 
Um, and then SL says, I've never heard someone who fronts themselves as an expert on cognitive functions so completely misrepresent introverted feeling. And they are doing this in response to what is introverted feeling. And my response to that was misrepresent by what standard? Like seriously, uh, like how to complain, but don't offer the alternative. I think you are academically lazy. Yes, I do think this person is academically lazy because people complain about my definitions and like, oh, your definitions of FI don't match the definitions that I've read everywhere else. I mean, seriously, could you even be like even more ignorant than that? Like seriously, how about you go verify your beliefs about it? Or, or are you valuing what everyone else says? You're like literally that friend of mine who's no longer my friend, by the way, who has someone talk mess about me behind my back to him and then he believes that person without actually talking to me about it and giving me my day in court whatsoever and then he makes a decision about it and then says like i'm this horrible person and then like you know and then and then and then treats me like crap as a result you know like really do you really put your thinking that much value on credentialed people or what the majority of people say because because mr cs joseph i shouldn't listen to you because your ideas aren't other anywhere else and because your ideas aren't anywhere else, yeah, it's because they're like new ideas. Have you ever thought of that? They're original ideas. Oh, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of original ideas. Like the four sides of the mind. Who else talks about that? Let's be honest. You know, like, come on. So, uh, but then again, like, you know, it's like, oh, because I haven't seen your stuff elsewhere. You know, that means I shouldn't have to listen to you. You know, cite your sources because I'm a T inferior. You know, it's like, okay, wow. Okay, so thank you for having your head in the sand and being extra ignorant right there. Like, come on. Like, seriously, come on. Wake up. Like, 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 seriously, is that like even, is that even useful? You know, like, like, come on. So. <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay. So what, what isn't original ideas to me? Uh, well, uh, Dr. Linda Behrens is not. Dr. John Beebe's content. Uh, Stephen Montgomery, PhD. David Kiersey, uh, Carl Jung, and Plato. All the ideas extracted from them, which includes temperaments, interaction styles, um, and uh, uh, you know how to identify temperaments, interaction styles, as well as cognitive functions and their definitions, etc. Sure, those ideas are not original to me. But then you, but when you have concepts like the four sides of the mind and cognitive synchronicity and cognitive focus, those are my original ideas. So like, okay, I'm just the next person in the chain of custody. So like, stop being jealous about like, like what I know. Like, stop being jealous. How about like you develop original ideas? Oh wait, I thought you're an ENTP. Oh wait, no, you're not. Uh, Zhang Huan's spirit, uh, true or false? This video is an elaborate excuse. Why make it so long when you could just get to the point? Okay, what is this, another ISTP complaining about too long? Uh, stop being lazy, bro, you know? Uh, and say, I think this is what happened. Therefore, for sure it happened, my dudes. My work colleagues take the MBTI, ex- the exact form, but how you judge and assume reasons for a mistake is delusional as astrologers. Okay, so you're literally saying that you should actually care about the MBTI test? Like one of my customers uh, who has me like type a lot of the people that they work with on a regular basis, like and we've typed a whole bunch of people going through the CS verified through our coaching. Like the statistic that we have is like 28% of the people that we've actually gotten. And we're like, like in the 20 plus people that we've verified so far with this little stat within this little group uh, actually have accurate MBTI test results. So don't tell me that you're using the MBTI test as any form of credibility and like some kind of argument against me in the content that I'm providing here. Like, are you absolutely like, are you like, abs- like, are you, are you nuts? Why does the MBTI test have any credibility? Well, you know, it's this authority that's been around for many decades right now and it's tried and true. Like, no, it's not. Like you have people like Ty Lopez out there and don't get me started, but you have people like him out there saying the MBTI is crap. Why is that? Because they didn't have a good experience with it because the test was inaccurate for them because they don't know how to use the test properly or the test is actually an inferior. The test is inferior, guys. Like, I'm sorry, it's inferior. The type grid's better, you know? So like, and I get that the type grid's not perfect, but mostly it's because people don't understand the type grid. But then again, I could make the same argument about the MBTI test. The letter dichotomies are still way limited compared to the type grid, but we are making improvements to the type grid to make that better. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's just... It's just ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? It's just absolutely ridiculous. She may, okay, so uh, honestly, call me judgmental, but you are set in your ways indeed. Yeah, it's because I'm right. Uh, To make sense out of something you can't make sense of. Okay, based on what facts? 
what's going on inside someone's head, okay? As if you have the capability to do it yourself because obviously you're just relying on, you know, bullshit sources on the internet as the basis for your intellectual uh, reasons. So why the hell do I care, you know? So, um, so um, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's so terrible. Um, she may choose to choose to act like an INTJ because her family's INT, which is more sense than this dribble. Are all ENTPs inept? Wow. So you're judging? Wow. Thank you, Jong Hyung Spirit, for judging an entire archetype based on your ignorant confirmation bias based perspective. That's really effective, bro. I'm sure that really venerates your reputation here on the internet. Thank you very much for exposing like how ignorant you are. This is very appropriate. Like, come on. Like, are you really going to be making these arguments? Like, like I, I'm willing to have that. If you can provide concrete evidence as to why I'm incorrect, by all means, bring that to a comment. Put in some links. Cite your sources, LOL. Because, like, as much as you try to tell me to cite my sources as if you could actually do it yourself. Like, hashtag hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop being a hypocrite. Uh, so, like, come on. That's not even, that's not even, like... <laughs> You know, and that, and they said that on the how to prevent uh, mistyping episode. So if you guys want to like go comment on that comment, by all means, have at it because that guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. That guy is so ignorant. And my response to that was based on what evidence? Because again, no evidence. Black sample. I love it when black sample uh, uh, posts. He says. Uh, I don't need to have faith in my ability to help people. I have evidence of my ability to help people externally, but even if my attempts were unsuccessful, I could still find comfort in knowing I tried. Faith is gullibility and is not the inverse of fear. I absolutely disagree with him on that. However, I understand where Black Sample's coming from. He could still find comfort in knowing I tried. That's fine, but faith is not necessarily gullibility. Although it can lead to gullibility, but it's not actually goal ability. And yes, it is actually the inverse of fear because if you have faith, you can accomplish a lot more than fear. Fear is actually like negative faith basically in the process. Uh, because if you don't have faith, you're actually creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Faith is a self-fulfilling prophecy, but so also is fear, right? So if you think about this, there's that one law uh, that says like, if you observe a probability, you are automatically making it more likely to come true. So faith is an observation of probability. We know this because of the faith definition, biblically speaking, is faith is defined by evidence of things hoped for and certainty of things unseen, okay? So when you observe a probability from a faith point of view, you are making it more likely to come true. And having faith means it's a more positive outcome. But if you have fear, you're observing a probability from a negative filter and making it more likely to come true, to come to pass, right? So as a result of that, well, bro, if you're being afraid, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that's like, yeah, see, I was afraid and it didn't work out and you're proving yourself right. And then you have confirmation bias as a result and then you get nowhere in your life. Wow, that's effective. That's effective. Why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's not even, it's not even ridiculous. It's not even enough. And so, um, but anyway, I'm not holding black sample against this. Black sample is actually a really good member of the community. Um, I'm just saying like, Hey, you know, faith is not gullibility and it is definitely the inverse of fear, but it's mostly from that self-fulfilling prophecy standpoint. And I'm glad that he brought it up. I have no problem with him disagreeing, whatever. Um, I'm just saying, it's just what he's saying is not true, but uh, thank you for commenting, Mr. Sample. I, I really appreciate you being a member of this community. Oh, yes. Vote Andrew Yang 2020, one month ago. Question for C.S. Joseph for the Q&A. I've been wondering, lady, and imagining how things will work out if we had only one of the personality types in the entire world. Uh, basically, would that would happen, that would like create hell on earth. So I just wanted to outline that. You don't want to just eliminate all the types and just have only one type. Like, they're, like life would suck. Imagine if everyone in the world was just ESTJs, you know? Like, who's going to be taking responsibility for their actions? And what's going to happen when everyone's, like, trying to, like, fill their own comfort zone? And it's literally a world of hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not going to be fun. Coconut Milch again. Um, so, I feel like NFJs have this odd complex about being loved in exaggerated ways. Like, they want to be the ultimate lover who gives multiple people illusions of being special so that those people would think that the NFJ is the most amazing lover of them all and thus love the NFJ and worship the NFJ at their feet. 
I'm paraphrasing there. Uh, like NFJs pretend to be loving in order to be loved, but I'm probably speaking of the unhealthy ones. In other words, they're fake and highly suspicious. Interesting. Uh, I wrote my comment before in hearing about how your friend got sucker punched by the ENFP woman, and it basically sounds like he was starved for love. INFJs try to hack other people by feigning love for them. Ooh. Ah. Roast. Uh, INFJs are hacks when people pretend to buy a, a, their lot of crap. When you buy their crap, they're like, yes, I've won the game. I'm number one in someone's eyes. I think INFJs can easily get stuck on the love and belonging stage of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, thus rarely reaching esteem. <laughs> Roast. And literally at work, there's an INFJ who's trying to hack me and I'm like, this is so obvious though, plus I'm an INTJ. What use do I have for romance? Well, I would rather have a mentor who can help boost me up via wisdom and help me to help myself. And that's why I read and watch your videos. Thank you, Coconut Milch, for this awesome comment. And yes, INFJs, please have more self-respect than that. Stop trying to manipulate people. And, um, you know, because like, I mean, for example, like this whole thing, you know, well, you didn't apologize to me, so I'm gonna pretend to hate you. Like, how about like realizing that maybe you did something so bad to hurt somebody that, uh, you know, uh, in the past that when they wronged you, it's nothing compared to what you did to them and they still remember that and that's why they didn't apologize to you. Have you considered that? Oh, but wait, you're an SA user and in fact you have SI demon. Good luck even remembering that happened to begin with. Are you being a hypocrite there, NFJs? Are you being a hypocrite? Don't be a hypocrite, please. Please don't be a hypocrite. How about taking responsibility for your own actions? Because don't forget humility Humility is important. I get that sometimes INFJs, the overactive TI child, develop this god complex where they want to be worshipped by their little ESTP wolf pack. But at the same time, it's like, you know... ESTPs are going to rip them to shreds. Say again? So ESTPs will rip those weak INFJs to shreds. They would. I hate INFJs. Well, not all of them. Just the immature ones. Yeah, the super immature ones. Like They just like, Ur, you know? It's like, come on, you know? So, uh, you know... It, 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 it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, INFJ is like, seriously, have self-respect. Realize that your God complex is not all that in a bag of chips. And this is amateur INFJs that I'm calling out. So, like, seriously, don't, don't give in to the God complex. Sometimes you guys don't even realize you're being dishonest. Sometimes you guys don't even realize what you're doing. Have a little bit more self-awareness and actually make sure that you're verifying your own behavior. You need to have more introspection. Use your TI child to verify everything you're doing and verify your own beliefs because your TE trickster makes you weak to believing just about anything. Okay, this is where we get INFJs going off and on and on and on and on about having kundalini experiences and thinking Eckhart Tolle is an amazing human being when the reality of the situation is, what use is that actually? Like, is there any value there? Is that actually useful? You know, what's the practical application? Because if there's no actual practical application, it's probably not useful. Like, sorry if I just stepped on a bunch of everyone's spiritual toes there, but at the same thing, and while spirituality is important, you have to understand that it's gotta be practical application because remember, faith without works is dead. So Pi says, uh, Pi is 3.14, one month ago said, this sounds like pseudoscience to me, chief. And he did this, how to type Drake, Dua Lipa, Avicii, Bones, Charlotte Whistles, and more. And my response to that is common sense is nothing more than common ignorance. Okay, nice to think that it's pseudoscience. Okay, sure, Mr. I'm concrete, bye. So, I think that CSJ smoked the ENTJ pipe tonight. Okay, let's talk about that. Like, why am I in ENTJ right now? Like, come on. I mean, I'm an INTJ focus ENTP. Like, do you not understand cognitive focus? Like, yeah, like, and I also talk a lot, and I'm, like, moving, like, like okay, whatever, I, whatever, I, whatever. Joni Brewer, one month ago, did an INFP break your heart? Poor baby! In response to who are on the INFPs, no. Nice assumption and confirmation bias, and using it as an excuse not to take responsibility. Like, come on. Like, like, uh, why are INFPs so triggered by, by, like, someone criticizing them? And this is one thing that really stresses me out about INFPs sometimes. They're just, like... Oh, you need to cite your sources, or oh, you're too harsh, or you're too biased, Mr. CSJ. You're too biased. And yet, INFPs are the most partial of all the types, the most sympathetic, 
to wrong people and having conflicting loyalties to bad or corrupt people, but because they're like, well, they're my friend, so I have I am justified in spreading rumors about you because you criticize my friend, even though you're right, but I'm loyal and sympathetic to my friend, so I have every right to spread rumors about you and call you out and tell you, you better be citing your sources when you yourself, the INFP, the most partial of all the types, calling me out for being biased, you're the most biased of us all. So stop being a hypocrite. Like seriously, stop being a hypocrite. If you're an INFP, how about you like become intellectually honest or academically honest for once and stop expecting everyone else to be academically honest for you. I'm sorry, INFPs, but that's selfish. How about you lead by example? Use your ESTJ subconscious and actually like, before you ask anyone else to cite your sources, maybe you should be citing your sources first because you're not. You're too lazy to do it oftentimes. Like, I'm sorry, these immature INFPs are so lazy to cite their source and they expect everyone else to do it. It's so annoying. Like, hypocrites. Stop being hypocrites. Like, seriously. All right. So, um, okay. So, uh, he's, oh, oh that, that INFP's back. Pius 3.14. What are your credentials? <laughs> and uh, I don't think he has or needs any in Jungian typology, says Giovanni Mahoney. And, uh, and then Ashley Windler's like, I wonder if you're an ISTJ talking to the Pius 3.4 and uh, uh, credentials. And then good old Dolph Dervish says, G-O-M, first off, I respect Chase's work. Objectively diving into his work and challenging his views with intent to seek and discover truth has changed my life with beneficial results. Thank you, Dolph Dervish. Uh, that said, oh, but I love you, Chase, but... Uh, I submit that the only reason Dr. John Beebe wouldn't uh, wouldn't disagree with you is because he, meaning DJB, actually has his authentic credentials. Yes, that's right. Dolph Dervish, who is one of my number one critics here in the CSJ community, uh, has this huge, overwhelming love for credentials and thinks that because I'm not a credentialed person that I lack credibility for some reason. And I'm just like, okay, what is... What is that all about Dolph Dervish, I still disagree with you. Until Chase has his credentials and for the right reasons, he will never reach the audience as deeply and profoundly as he aspires to. Dolph Dervish, I've had people tell me that when I only had 100 or 200 subscribers, okay? Like, you may think that now, but like 10 years from now, like you're gonna be so wrong and I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna prove all you people wrong about it and it's gonna be great. And my SE demon is gonna take such joy in doing it, if you know what I'm saying, because you don't know what you're talking about in that regard. Though I have a hunch that Chase knows this and he's adapting accordingly. Not really. I could give a damn about credentials. And if anything, if I do get credentials, it's about getting access to resources to make it a little bit easier on myself. But then again, am I really going to get credentials on my own? No. I'd rather have some university just reach out to me like, hey, we want you to research at our uh, university and we're just going to give you an honorary degree to do it because we recognize that you're an expert in psychology. Thank you. You know, see, that's what's more likely to happen. I'm not going to go to from some freaking university and learn psychology and follow their bouncing ball and follow their bullshit affiliative process and learn psychology from their point of view so that when I'm all done and have that degree, I have to literally unlearn all of the wrong crap that they taught me about psychology just so that I could actually get some research and actual work done. Oh, all the while, I just dropped $100,000 and I'm in debt uh, as a result of having that education. Real cool story, bro. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. Like, why... Why would I why would I do that? And preach it, Stan. Why would anyone care about credentials when trying to pioneer? Exactly. When you're a pioneer, do you think Newton, uh, Sir Isaac Newton had had uh, had credentials, you know what I'm saying? Or or think of all these great minds who didn't have credentials. Like where do they get educated? Like why why is this like, you know, I don't care if any university is going to buy me, by the way. I really don't care. Like I don't give a damn if a university wants to like reach out to me or not. I don't have to do this. I don't need no university to do this. It's just, you know, having access to resources that I wouldn't normally, that's fine. It just makes it easier in some ways. Otherwise, I could care less. I'm going to make it on my own regardless of what anyone says. Even if I have to broadcast or live stream out of a Volkswagen bus on the street, living homelessness for the fourth time in my life, then fine. Because having been homeless in the past, like I know how to live on the street if I have to. But do you think that's going to stop me from coming on YouTube here and teaching you people about psychology properly? Hell no. I'm going to get it done. Because that's my job. It's my duty to do so. Are you going to get in the way of that? Like, okay, sure. But you can't stop me. 
I'm like so tired of everyone in my life who's like, oh, you know, CS Jones, we're going to put you in the ditch because you don't have credentials or you're, you know, you're just a piece of crap or whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure, maybe. But then like, you see me getting up because it is written, folks, a righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises again. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise again. But a wicked man, he stumbles in his folly and he doesn't get up. Okay. So think about that. Like, I've, I've been in way worse situations than most of the people in this audience even realize, and yet I'm still going. So like you can, you can throw my ass in prison or whatever, but you think that's gonna stop me telling the truth? Hell no. Like, no, it's just not gonna happen. Like seriously. So I, it should stop you. You should stop teaching people fake improv. Okay, whatever. Thank you. Um, Princess T, one month ago. How do introverted males pro approach women then? Uh, and this is like, how do it does initiating compare to responding? Uh, they are probably out of luck, introverted males. They would require either a wingman or a woman to initiate. Some introverts can approach women just fine, but they often aren't prepared. Uh, that's so wrong in so many ways. Princess T, you have to realize something. That when it comes to initiating with women, uh, whoever the NI user is, that's actually who has the responsibility of initiating with somebody. It's uh, so like if you have uh, uh, an inch, like an INTP man who's an INTP, he's introverted, he's also an NE user, it's still the responsibility of the ENTJ women uh, to initiate with him. Like, I'm sorry, because if an NTP man's going to initiate with women, he's going to come off creepy. It's better that the NTJ woman takes control and then initiates with him. That way he's in his comfort zone and she'd rather him be in his comfort zone because she's only comfortable when he's comfortable. So Princess T, please understand that from a cognitive function point of view, that's actually how initiation works. That's just, you know, not really there. It's just, yeah, seriously, it's just not even there. Cool, we got over 100 people uh, tuning in tonight. Awesome, I uh, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, so Kurt Cobain was a classic INFP. He was not an INFJ at all. You've just lost a subscriber. Okay, wow, uh, based on what facts. Is it because you read somewhere on the internet that said Kurt Cobain was an INFP and you're basing your entire argument on something else that you read elsewhere? When like collectively, when it comes to the science, people are ignorant about it anyway because they're often confusing the definition of expert intuition with introvert intuition and you think everyone else on the internet is credible? Wow, okay, thank you for that. Um, and uh, not an accurate typing. I expected better from you. And I, my question to this person is, which is A, B, what evidence do you have? Oh, wait, once again, no one is producing evidence. Thank you. Uh, Ashley Windler, uh, one month ago says, love the demonic character, by the way. Thank you very much. I've been working very hard on developing my superego and uh, making it very fun, you know, because guys, you just gotta know why I like to use a knife, you know? I mean, you know, if you if you kill them, they won't learn nothing. And I'm quoting the Riddler, Jim Carrey's Riddler from Batman Forever, who was uh, very much an ESFP-focused ENTP, uh, just so you guys know. It's one of the reasons why he uh, actually took on that role, because he's an ENTP. Um, Vika Dutch, one month ago, he, 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 I really like your NTP videos. However, your NFJ videos, especially INFJs, are more negative than positive. With NTP, you talk about their strengths and weaknesses with almost a perfect balance. But when it comes to INFJs, you focus more on the weaknesses and expound to that point that the personality you are describing is either mentally ill or borderline narcissistic. There's a clear bias that you have with INFJs. Um, so... This person is like telling me that I'm biased about INFJs and that I'm labeling them potentially mentally ill or borderline personality or, or, or borderline narcissistic. To which I respond with, LOL, you are likely an INFP. This is an example. So Vika Dutch here is an NFP who thinks they're an NFJ, probably because they're spending way too much time watching Frank James out there, who who's this INFJ, who, he's this guy who thinks he's an INFJ, but he's not. And uh, he's like, teaching everybody out there that all these INFJ things, and they're not INFJ things at all. They're not INFJ things at all, but like he just assumes that is, it is because, you know, he's been taught incorrectly by other people. And then as a result of that, you have people like this who are like, they're INFPs thinking they're INFJs when they're not. And then it's like, okay, and then they criticize me for it. And it's like, hey, would you just at least do me a favor and go watch how do INFJs compare to INFPs? It's funny. 
the INFPs that actually go watch that video after criticizing me on the who are the INFJs lecture, when they actually go watch that lecture, they realize, oh, I'm actually an INFP. And then they go watch the INFP lecture and they're like, oh, that does sound like me. Funny how that works. Except like the INFPs in that situation, like seriously, they just need to like stop being ignorant and not like be like, uh, you know, it's very, it's very funny, you know, like, so anyway, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's like not appropriate. Um, Epic Kitty. So this kind of in a subtle way explains the extreme feminists. They've lost self-respect, gaining weight, then complaining about it, and then not doing anything to fix it since they're arrogant. Then they complain about not getting somebody good, and you just have to sit back and wonder, why do you think? What did you expect? Just a reminder, I'm not putting down every feminist in the world, just the ones who are truly outrageous and over the top. I'm also going off of what I've experienced firsthand as a man and generalization of those over-the-top women. I apologize to anyone whom I may offend. No offense taken, Mr. Epic Kitty. I just would like to state that, you know, it's kind of interesting how feminists are the first ones to complain, but they're not, you know, and they're not willing to take all the, any responsibility at all. And as my ESTP mentor pointed out, these are the women out there who they want all the benefit out of the relationship, but none of the responsibility. And it's because women often don't, aren't really held accountable uh, by men in the society because men are too busy having nice guy syndrome and they need to read that book by Dr. Robert Glover, No More Mr. Nice Guy. Something that I think uh, uh, host Eric of Talking With Famous People would benefit from, just saying. Uh, but the point is, is that nice guy syndrome inhibits men to hold women accountable properly. And it's no wonder we have movements like MGTOW out there, men going their own way because they just can't stand the fact that women have this sense of entitlement. And it's a sense of entitlement that's absolutely destroying relationships and contributing to fatherlessness, even though fathers are lawfully blamed more so about fatherlessness than women are. So you might want to consider it's a lot more fair playing field than most people even realize. Like, it's just like kind of frustrating. So yeah, don't do that. Um, so uh, Countess One, uh, in response to how to social engineer INTJs. Um, so, um, so uh, since we're talking about avocado trees, we can notice my, my really cool cactus right there. It's, it's pretty awesome. That's Larry the cactus. Uh, I wonder what type he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, any of my colleagues out to destroy me can simply watch this social engineering video. I'm a procrastinator though with time and maturity. I have disciplined myself to start work on a project earlier even though it feels like the engine needs more time to run fully and efficiently. I do this because of the nature of my work. More often than not, urgent and important task comes and appends my plans, relegating the work I'm working on to second place. If I do not leave the, a window of time, so to speak, that would spell my end. But at the core, I'm still a procrastinator, just like I have to remind myself constantly to get working or else. It doesn't come naturally and it's not easy. I have more problems with trust versus paranoia though, especially at work. I trust some of my colleagues to the point of being childlike and at the, time, and at the same time, I am very distrustful of the rest. I don't blame you. Uh, I expect people working in teams with me to want to work together with me in order to achieve a common goal, not for them to stab me in the back by making me a scapegoat and look bad so they can look good and climb up the corporate ladder, which happens all the time to INTJs, let's be honest. It happened once many years ago and I still feel like kicking myself over it because I had been paying attention. I would have seen it coming. For my colleagues that I don't trust, it makes it hard for them to work with me because I will be suspicious of everything, their motives, their intentions, asking myself why they're making me do this stupid task. Are they trying to waste my time so they can work on a more important task and shine in the office, etc.? How can I get around this? Thanks. Well, that's your vice of paranoia. How about as an INTJ who you're after you're watching how to social engineer uh, INTJs, how about, so count this one. Uh, you go out of your way to just outperform everybody else and just shine on your own merit. Stop concerning yourself with the opinions of other people. If you're, and don't, and stop caring about your perception, like the perception that you give off to others. Focus actually on like doing a good job and gaining credit for doing such a great job. Defend your credit, obviously. But like, if you're actually focused on being good, you will win by meritocracy. Remember, INTJs, you guys gotta understand this, success is its own revenge. 
Stop concerning yourself and comparing yourself to other people. You'll never be successful in life until you stop doing that. What you need to do is just be successful on your own merit. And then through your own success, it's the best revenge in life you could ever get. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. It doesn't matter how, how you compare to other people. Stop comparing yourself to others. INJs, both INJs need to figure this out. The person that you need to compare yourself to is your own self. You need to become a better you. The reason why you might be failing in life is because you're not a better you. You're too busy trying to be better than everybody else when the reality the situation is you need to become a better you. And at that point, you'll become successful. And that's what INTJs need to learn. So, um, and then uh, Count This One goes on. Also guys, come on, look at the bright side of things. If we know how people can destroy us, we can guard ourselves against it. Thank you, Count This One, for even making that statement. A lot of people give me so much crap about how to social engineer, how to manipulate. Oh, CSJ, you're a bad person because you reveal this information to the world. When the reality of the situation is, I'm giving you this information so that you guys can defend against it. It's not that hard, you know. In fact, uh, I hope more people will make vids like this so I can learn about my Achilles heel. Know your enemy, learn their modus operandi so that when your opponent makes the first step in that direction, you know and you can read the signs, be ready to defend yourself, anticipate and foil their plans. Preach it. We are not called the strategist for nothing. It's supposed to be our forte. Prior to learning about my type, I have people telling me that I have been too trusting or too paranoid, so I thought that that's all rubbish because how can I be both? As a consequence of learning about my personality type, and especially from C.S. Joseph's videos on INTJ, I understand it better now, but more importantly, what I should do to improve my relationships with others. At least for friendships, I'm still clueless as regards to romantic and professional relationships, so thank you, Mr. C.S. Joseph, for your videos. You are very welcome, Countess. Thank you for being a member of the community. I really appreciate it. A lot of INTJs got so butthurt after that upload, how to uh, social engineer INTJs, that it just got really terrible. Um, and then Countess One says, hey, SI users, if you want us to all read all your texts, especially old texts, keep them short, simple, and concise. Otherwise, if you're unlucky enough to meet someone like me, be prepared to receive some insults. And uh, my response to that is, and then SE users wonder why they're ultimately abandoned. <laughs> That's how I uh, put that in there. Because, like, let's be honest, um, one of the most annoying things about text messages is that SE users think that because a text is old that it's lost energy when it's to an SI user that's not the case. If we send if an SI user sends an SE user a text, that text still has all of its energy to the SI user and SI users or an SE users need to realize that about SI users. So SE users please remember that when you get text messages from SI users they're still important and don't like choose to not read them and respond to them because that's actually really disrespectful to SI users. So please don't do that. Not that I'm calling out Countess One for that, even though it looks like I did. Uh, it's more of like, I'm just trying to state that for like, for everyone's edification. Um, so, awesome. Uh, Sedingo, so you got the labels wrong. This is in response to how to type Alex Jones edition when I call out Alex Jones for being a TI trickster ENFB, LOL, LOL, LOL. You got the labels wrong. It has to be norms FE, not ethics FE. Ethics is a field of philosophy concerned with Deontay concepts based on logic. It requires education plus TI, even though common people are clueless about ethics. Their usage that, of that word is incorrect in the scientific context. I'm not talking about it in a scientific context, so why are you bringing this up, Sedingo? Like, seriously. Uh, I'm an INTP and a mathematician concerned with Deontic logic, which is a foundation of moral ethics. Okay, that's why you brought it up. Fair enough. But here's the thing, though. It's not about norms. You can say that FE or ethics is related to norms when you combine FE with SI because SI is more traditionalistic and then it's a norm. So SI plus FE, so introverted sensing tradition plus extroverted feeling ethics equals norms, but it's not, but FE does not equal norms. It's only FE plus SI equals norms. So take that from your mathematician point of view, uh, Mr. Sedingo. I think you will find a better result. And that's why I responded with no. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, oops, I forgot to delete that part there. Let's delete this part here. And let's delete this part here. So, and guys, we're going to be coming to the end of our episode here in a few moments. Uh, just be aware of that. So we're going to be closing. Uh, we're going to be closing down the stream here in a few minutes here. EH1, as an INTJ, this seems mean. Why would somebody want to deliberately hurt somebody? I'm like, okay, do you have your head in the sand? Like, 
honestly. And this is a response to how to social engineer INTJs. And that's why my response is, why would anybody? Why would anybody want to hurt delivery or hurt somebody? I wonder why. Any bully uh, one month ago. Damn it, you have, honestly, I think this is why I don't need credentials. So all you credential people out there, it's like, yeah. So, oh, I dropped themes. Okay. Stream died. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know why that happened. So, okay. <laughs> a little bit of lag. Yeah, I had a I had a few drop frames there for a second. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why. I have a um, I have it hardwired in, but like I'll be straight. Like my modem is terrible. I'm gonna replace my modem. So I'm actually gonna write that down as a task. Uh, so we'll get that figured out here. All right. So hi, this is all, Mr. Uh, Hibernator. Um, and uh, I, uh, I also don't believe in multitasking. By that, I mean actively doing two things at once. You can either switch or do two or more things by muscle memory and other thing actively. It's hard, but I too can talk on the phone, drive at the same time, which is super hard for me, but I can do it. I can also play the guitar and sing at the same time. Yay, but that's not multitasking. Try to draw a circle with one hand and a triangle with another. You can't do it. You can do it by switching or if you have split brain hemispheres. I think your definition of multitasking is not the same definition that I'm speaking of. So you talking to two people at once is a thing that you can do by switching, not by actively multitasking. I'm sorry, but I've seen you multitask on the stream a shit ton of times. You basically end up ignoring the person. Look into it. You're supposed to listen to INTJs. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and yet I drive and lecture at the same time. That's my response to that. Sorry. <laughs> Hybe's a cool dude. We like Hybe, but I disagree with him on the standpoint. He makes a fair point, and it's a good argument, but multitasking, it kind of depends. Like, I can drive and stream at the same time, you know. It's not like doing the same task multiple. It's more about doing multiple tasks simultaneously. If he's talking about drawing a circle and drawing a triangle at the same time, you're actually doing the same task twice. That's not the same thing as multitasking, which is actually doing multiple tasks simultaneously. Different. Parafox, INFP here, and I'm starting to wonder why I even bother clicking on any video with the word C.S. Joseph written under them. You got some serious resentment issues toward us, dude. How do ENFPs compare to INFPs? Can you blame me when I get comments like that? Yet you haven't bothered to watch any of the other videos which shows resentment towards everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm resentful towards everyone. That's true. You know, so like, come on, like... Oh, that's not multitasking. That's one foot in, one foot out. Okay. I mean, if that's really if you if, if that's really what your point of view is, that's fine, I guess. Um Brett Barnes says, it would be nice if the episode number were the title of these videos. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. We actually tried putting the season episode number into uh the lectures. The problem is it destroyed our SEO. So that's why we don't do it. Um, knowledge is a waste of time. What role should INFPs play? Like, let's see how it is. This is not a Q&A session, by the way. Um, if college is a waste of time, what role should INFPs play given their super proclivity for academia? Any other places they can be an academic? Absolutely. Go volunteer or go in a library and learn about a subject that interests you and then uh, become an expert at that subject. All you have to do is just get an Audible account or go to a library and just read. You don't have to get credentials. I get that INFPs feel like that they need credentials in order to seem credible so that their voice has more value. But if they actually devote themselves to becoming an expert, then their voice, their opinion has the highest value anyway. So they don't have to worry about whether or not they have credentials to begin with. It's just something to consider. Um, the description says live Q and A session. Oh, my bad. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, uh, Chocobo Asylum. I did not know that. LOL. My bad. <laughs> um, Brett Barnes. Uh, we already did Brett Barnes. Um, so thank you for that. Autumn Bonsai. Ty Lopez is an ENTP by his own admission, according to testing. So what? Testing is wrong, and Ty Lopez is ignorant. He's an ENFP. And that's why I responded with, like, that doesn't mean anything, Autumn Bonsai. Sorry. 
Uh, Jason Gildersleeve, haha, please, if you do anything live, use the Elder Wand. Fair enough. Uh, I definitely, if I'm at a speaking engagement in front of a bunch of people, I might just randomly pull out the Elder Wand and swing it around like a madman. Rain McKenzie says, you're really annoying. Bye. And my response to that is, you're really ignorant. Bye. Thank you, Rain McKenzie. Or not. Stephen Kohler. I don't respect that you wear a mask. Be who you are and lose people till you find the real ones. My response is, get over it. I wear a mask because people can't handle the real me. Like, that's, like, seriously, watch the Virtue and Vice episode for uh, ENTPs, and you'll understand exactly why it's necessary for ENTPs to wear a mask. So. It's pretty easy. So Domesday says it's pretty easy to research important ideas. INFPs just search for experts on a given subject and listen to lectures or books those people have written. Thank you for pointing that out, Domes. I really appreciate that. Uh, Robert Acosta. I have a three-word quick response for the title of this uh, video. They don't work. No need to watch now. How do intimate relationships actually work? Human attraction to dynamics explained. It's what he did that. And I responded to them. I have a three-word word quick response for this comment. Ignorant people stay ignorant. No need to listen now. LOL. <laughs> yeah, stop. Guys, like... If you're going to have an opinion, don't be ignorant when you share it. Muhammad Abul Saud. You need to learn more about spirituality and enlightenment. Watch Eckhart Tolle as a starter. Like, I'm sorry, but Eckhart Tolle is, like, just another person who, like, would espouse the, uh, the philosophy that's behind, like, the concept known as the cremation of care. So I'm not exactly considering Mr. Eckhart Tolle as a... Um, a credible source when it comes to his idea of spirituality while he can have his opinion and talk about spirituality all he wants uh i'm not actually going to make base any of my ideas or my belief systems based on any of his content because i fundamentally disagree with him um it's necessary to wear a mask because you're hiding a weak cowardly egocentric man under the button-ups and hair gel i mean okay am i really that terrible like Am I really that cowardly? I'm the one here on YouTube with my camera in my face and you're just like some random internet troll who's just like trying to make trouble. Like, uh, what does that mean? I'm actually doing work here and you're just like complaining. Like, yeah, it's like, wow, that's that's really useful. Thank you. <laughs> Calvin Gomez, is there such thing as an ASFP because I'm an ambivert? No. Watch the ambivert visit, uh, episode in season 15 playlist and you'll see that you're wrong. Yeah, there's no such thing as ambiversion, guys. Ambiversion is a lie. Um, uh, Yaley Harrell says, uh, you really don't like INFPs, LOL. I come to your channel because you have an amazing knowledge. Still, I have to say you're not good for encouraging INFPs at all or to use your own words. It is what it is. Uh, how do I ENFPs compare to INFPs? And my response to that is, I'm not here to be encouraging to people who really want to hear things they like. Biblically speaking, it is written. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, they will, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Wow. Yeah, that's a huge call out to NFPs everywhere. Don't be that guy. Like, seriously, don't be that guy. All right. So, uh... So Lloyd TXW says, this sounds like sour grapes. There's a lot of passive aggression and, and uh, bitterness aside. The messenger is as important as the message. If you don't even make a pretense of objectivity, it just sounds whiny. Okay, so you're admitting to me that I have to have a pretense of objectivity. What if that pretense is false? So are you literally just claiming that I need to be biased or like try to lie to people and like make it look like and have this perception that I am objective? Like, why would I do that? Oh wait, is that something you do? Are you telling me that you have a pretense of objectivity with people? So you're trying to sound objective when the reality situation is you're not objective, Mr. Lloyd TXW. Wow. Oh, and it just sounds whiny. Okay, so because I'm not lying, because I'm not having the false pretense of objectivity, I'm sounding whiny. How does that even make sense? You don't make any sense. Like, I'm sorry. Like, come on. Maybe someone saw through you 
Okay, yeah, they saw through me because like I'm actually being legit here and telling the truth. You're telegraphing so much more about yourself than you are about the type of personality you're basing your conclusions on. Yeah, because I actually keep track of all my experiences in life. And then as a result of keeping track of those experiences, I can actually provide decent actual examples of stories that make sense. Because guess what? People identify with stories. People want to hear stories. So what am I supposed to do? You know, who are the, and they said this in response to who are the INFJs. My response to that, it's funny how the people who complain about me being biased are the most partial and biased of us all. Such hypocrites. And then Taylor Gregory says in response, uh, or, or no, here, okay, such hypocrites. Okay, so Taylor Gregory has a completely new um, uh, comment here. We're almost done, folks. We're going to be ending the stream here momentarily. Uh, Women have this problem where they can love just about any jackass on the street, and men know that. Nailed it! Thank you for uh, that observation, uh, Mr. Uh, Taylor Gregory. Or maybe that was a, a woman. I don't know. Uh, Saeed Radmir. Man, go put some insurance on that freaking brain of yours. Your hypothesis is absolutely beautiful, even if not right, though I think it's to be correct. All right. Uh, I'll see about getting an insurance policy. KLP says, I'm an INFP and a scientist. To me, citing my sources is an integrity thing, not so much about opposing original thought. I'm very concerned about presenting honest work by one, not taking credit for ideas that are not my own, and two, not misleading people. The work I do can influence legal and political decisions. So if I'm going to make a claim, I better either have sources or data to back it up. However, I think I'm very open-minded to new ideas, but they need to be tested before we implement them into society. Okay, that's fair. But uh, while you do that, you're also stifling original thought. So like KLP, do you have like a system that we can follow or a methodology or philosophy that we can follow to guarantee the sanctity of original thought? That's my immediate question in response to that. Uh, I mean, I, I get that you're not taking for uh, idea, credit for ideas that are not there and you're not misleading people. But at the same time, I'm concerned that you're stifling original thought. So I'm just like, you know, looking at that um and Buga said klp might be maybe intp thank you for that statement all right uh ben hendrick says geez a little bitter aren't we and my response is geez a little biased aren't we Ooh. you know like come on like come on guys like let's like actually you know <laughs> not <laughs> not uh not get to that uh that point of view like pre um uh, pretty uh pretty le le legitimate you know it's like come on so any folks that's it for uh, who triggered csj episode six thanks for coming i think we had a lot of fun tonight sorry for the stream uh dropping a few times um uh, my modem is terrible i'm gonna be replacing my modem with a better modem uh very soon uh so we'll get that figured out i switched a wired connection which is great but the modem is still pretty bad so i'm gonna go pick up a higher quality modem tomorrow and get this thing figured out so Anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. It was a great episode. It's been a while since we've done Who Triggered CSJ. Uh, but uh, I remember, folks, I, re I read, like, literally every comment. Um, and uh, I will uh, keep track of the really positive ones and the really negative ones. And we'll go through them together just to show you guys that I actually do care of the comments. I know when you see, like, the little heart things that I, that I, that I say it loves this comment, that's really just me, like, marking each of the comments red. Because it's important to me that this audience feels listened to. Like, even if you're criticizing me and whatnot, I'm still going to, like, take that to heart and, like, listen to what you're saying and actually consider that you might actually be correct. The TI parent, that's what it does, right? So I hit the little hearts on the comments. That does not necessarily mean I agree with you. It just means I'm, like, basically marking it as red so that you understand for a fact that I actually read it, right? So just understand that about comments. So when you're putting your comments, make sure you have that uh, figured out, um, you know, and whatnot. So cool folks. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, glad you were able to join us this evening. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing another uh, season 17 episode here. Very quick. We're going to be talking about the super ego. It's going to be a really fun lecture. Look uh, for it coming out very soon. Uh, otherwise, um, uh, thank you, John K for that uh, amazing statement. I really appreciate uh, your criticism, I guess, even though that's not technically criticism. That's just like, you know, I guess, ad hominem so all right folks have a good night and uh